In this video, I'm going to show you how to take one of my existing solutions that I built for my blog uh, that uses a content editor web part to put a content slider on the screen, as you see here now, and turn this into a SharePoint framework client web part. So uh, if, you look, uh, if you look at the screen now, we see that we do have a content slider scrolling across the page. Um, and you can find this content slider on the blog post uh, that I'll be posting up here on the screen. Oh, look, there it is. And uh, if we edit the page, we can see that this content slider is a content editor web part. And that content editor web part is pointing to a script in our site assets library. So there's the new SharePoint framework coming out, and that's what we'll need to use to create this sort of functionality for the new modern site pages that Microsoft has created. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the process of taking this solution uh, that uses a script in a site assets library and a content editor web part, and show you how we can get it to work as a SharePoint framework client web part, okay? So let's just jump in and get started. I already have my system set up to build SharePoint Framework Client Web Parts. Um, if you don't have your system set up, you can follow the directions over on the, uh, the GitHub wiki that walks you through the steps. It's a pretty easy process, but there's several steps involved. But once you have your system set up, all you have to do is uh, execute the uh, yo statement for Yeoman, and it's going to ask you what type of project you want to build, and we want to build a Microsoft SharePoint project. It's, this is equivalent to doing a Visual Studio file new project and selecting the project template. Uh, so we have to give our solution a name. Let's call it SPFX convert since we're converting one of my other solutions. We want to create a subfolder with the solution name. Uh, web part name, we'll call it the same thing, SPFX convert. What is the web part description? I'll just leave this blank for now. And we want to choose no JavaScript framework. You can see that you can choose React or Knockout. We're just going to choose no JavaScript framework because we don't want to mess with that stuff. So this is going to go through the process. This could take a little bit of time, um, and I'll probably just fast forward the video to the very end here so we don't have to wait. Through the magic of video editing, we're done building our project, and we can actually change directory into our project that we just created, which was SPFX convert, and we can launch Visual Studio Code so that we can take a look at our, look at our project. So here's our project loaded in Visual Studio Code, and you can see that we have a source tree with the source code for this basically empty web part. Um, if we wanted to execute this web parts to see what it looks like, we can just come over to our console here and do a gulp serve, and this is going to build a project and execute it locally for us to do some testing on it. So I'm, I'm not gonna go into the the process or, or go through the effort of explaining what is in all of these different folders that you get with the project. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, but the main point of this video is to walk you through uh, the process for getting an existing customization converted over. So we're just gonna we're gonna plow through and see how quickly uh, we can get that done. So this is going to launch a local workbench for us so we can actually take a look here and I can see here's our SPFX convert web part and here is that empty web part it creates. Okay, So this is our starting point uh, for our web part. So the first thing we need to do is get our scripts and CSS from our content editor web part project and put those into our SharePoint framework project. So I'm just going to open up my file explorer here and I'm going to copy over those files that we need for the project. So I've got the main JavaScript file that does the REST query and the generating of the slides. I've got the CSS and the unslider library. And I'm just going to copy those over to my source directory for my uh, SharePoint framework project. Okay, So we have these files copied and because we're utilizing jQuery with this project I need to also add a reference to jQuery and allow my SharePoint framework project to use jQuery. To do that I'm going to go into my config.json file, and from here we can actually add an external reference to jQuery so that we can ac access jQuery uh, from the CDN. And what that's going to look like, it's going to come in here to the external section, and I'm going to add a reference to jQuery. 
along with the path to get the jQuery CDN. So now uh, our SharePoint Framework project can use jQuery. Let me go ahead and save this. The next thing we need to do is that we need to do a little bit of cleanup on our script. So if we look at our pate slider.js file, in this file we are doing an HTTP post. And one of the things an HTTP, HTTP post needs is it needs the form digest. Well, uh, for the workbench that we're using for our testing, it doesn't have a form digest, so this is going to throw an error on us. So we actually need to change our code so that it can use uh, the form digest properly. And to do that, we're going to simply execute a different REST query. So I'm just going to take this updated script here. I'm going to pop, paste it over, and we can see in this new script, we are making a REST query to get the context info so that we can get the form digest. And now that we have the form digest, we can continue on with what our previous content editor web part script was doing. Okay, So that's one tweak I found I had to make uh, to the script to get it to work. But that's basically the only change we've made to our JavaScript file at this point. The next thing we want to do is we want to import the CSS for our uh, project so that it can use these unslider styles. Now the SharePoint framework has its own way of doing styles. If we open up this module.scss you can see the styles that are being used by the SharePoint framework. And what's great about the SharePoint framework is that it isolates the styles to your specific project so you don't have to worry about your styles overriding somebody else's project. However this means the styles used by unslider won't work if we just create them as styles in the SharePoint framework. So to get around that, what we can do is simply come into our style sheet here in the SharePoint project, and then we can import the style sheets that we had added. So the unslider CSS and the unslider dash dots, we can import those by going into our style sheet for the project and putting in a couple of import statements to import each one of those. And this will allow our script to use those global styles I not have to use the styles isolated to the uh, SharePoint Framework web part. All right, so we've got our files copied over. We've referenced jQuery as an external. We've tweaked our main JS file to use a uh, an additional query to get our form digest. We've imported our style sheets, and the next thing we need to do is actually render uh, the content slider. To render the content slider, we're going to have to come into that main TypeScript file. Uh, that was rendering the HTML for that Hello World web part, and we need now, now need to change it so that we can render out our uh, content slider. So what we can do is come to this HTML, which before was generating the Hello World content, uh, and let's get rid of all the HTML that was used before, and let's paste in some HTML that we can use to actually generate the slider. So here, here we have a div, is going to be actually the container for our slides. Uh, now we need to add the actual. Now we need to add the script that actually executes the method to make the REST query and generate the slides so that we can have our content slider on the page. So to do that, we're just going to copy and paste the method used by the content editor web part from the previous blog post. So you can see immediately after we paste in this method, we're getting an error over the jQuery reference to execute the page slider. Uh, that's because even though we imported um, or specified jQuery as an external, it still hasn't been imported into uh, our project or our file here yet. So we actually need to come up here. We need to import jQuery. And we also need to declare a variable called jQuery. And that's because since we're referencing jQuery externally, there's no local TypeScript file uh, for the SharePoint framework to know what is this jQuery variable, right? If we don't, so we need to declare it and say, hey, jQuery is a variable. And this will allow us to get past the compile error of the system not knowing what jQuery is, all right? So we've imported jQuery, we've declared jQuery, and now we need to tell the uh, render method to also require our JavaScript files. Since those two local JavaScript files we have, we need to say, hey, this script also requires the unslider library 
and the page slider.js. Okay, so we've imported jQuery, we've uh, declared jQuery as a variable, we've told it to use both the unslider min JS file and the page slider.js file. We've had it render out the div that's going to be our container for holding our slides, and we're going to execute the page slider method, which will read from the SharePoint list and generate our slides and put them into this uh, div. Okay, does that make sense? So now that we've got everything in place, uh, we should be able to come back to uh, Gulp and reload everything. So let's let's save all our files. And the one thing we do need to do is we do need to stop and restart Gulp because we made those entries into our uh, config file. We actually need to stop and restart Gulp at this point. So let's do a Gulp serve. And it's going to go through and launch our local workbench for us again. And when we look at the workbench and we go to add our web part, you see we're getting an error, an error retrieving view. That's because we're actually executing against a SharePoint resource to read data from a list. And since we're running locally, there's no SharePoint site to read that data from. So what we can do is test this in our tenant by going to the workbench that exists in our tenant. And to get there, you go to your site's name, your URL for your site, and you go to layouts, workbench.aspx and this loads for you a workbench within your tenant so this is the sim this looks similar to the workbench locally but we're actually running it within our SharePoint site now and it's actually communicating with our local workbench to commute to allow us to test our web parts so we can come in here and add a web part and you can see there is our SPFX convert web part we can add it and there's our slider right so our slider is now working as a SharePoint framework web part. So let's take this a little step further and let's really take advantage of what you can do uh, with the SharePoint framework and allow users to configure the web part using web parts properties. Because right now, if we try to edit the web parts for this, the properties for this web part, there's nothing there yet. It's just the dis default description field. But if we look at our code, there is a lot of properties getting passed into this web part. Uh, the user can specify which lit, the name of the list that, that the slider uses, which view from the list the slider uses. What do you want the next and previous arrows to look like? So there's a bunch of properties here that a user would not have access to using a SharePoint framework client web part. And if they used the previous version, the content editor web part, they still would have to edit this script to make these changes. So one of the great things about the SharePoint framework is that we can take advantage of the properties given to us there, okay? And there's a few places we have to go to and make these changes to add the properties. The first place we need to go to is our interface. And this is going to have uh, the interface that's going to declare what properties are available to us. So we are going to, instead of using a description property, we're going to add some more. We're gonna add properties for the user to specify the list name, the view name. Uh, if they wanna add some custom CSS, let's let them add some custom CSS. We'll do a next and previous so they can specify what they want for the HTML for the next and previous. And then we're going to, let's throw a Boolean in there to say do we wanna actually show the arrows or not, okay? So we've got the interface there. And now we need to actually ex uh, update the strings that are going to be used for the labels of the web part properties. So let's come into the en-us file and let's just put our new labels in there. So I'm going to have one for list name, view name, custom CSS, next arrow. All right, so this is going to give us our labels. And then let's also make the updates to the my strings file where we can declare those labels. Okay. The next thing we need to need to do is go to our manifest file. And what we want to do is we want to specify the default values that uh, for those properties so that the web part doesn't blow up the first time you run it if you haven't set any properties. So here is our properties listed under the pre-configured entries. And we're just going to set the default values for the list name, view name, the CSS, and the arrows property, okay? Finally, we need to come back to our main TypeScript file and we need to come down here to where the property pane settings are being 
created and we need to uh, declare all of our properties here so that they will actually appear in our web part properties. So let's just overwrite these group fields. And here you can see that we are going to be using list name, view name, next, previous, and custom CSS. And these are property pane text fields. And we've also set up that the custom CSS is going to be multi-line. However, you see we're not we're getting a compile error on the property pane checkbox, and that's because the property pane checkbox has not been imported. So we need to come up to our import section here and go get property pane checkbox. All right, so now our red squiggly has gone away. Finally, let's update our uh, method here. So instead of using the hard-coded values, it actually uses those properties. And that will look like this. So now instead of hard-coding the list name, we're going to use this.properties.listName, this.propertiesViewName, previous, next. So now we're taking advantage of those properties that exist in the pane for actually configuring our slider. And now if we come back to our web part and we refresh the page, we should be able to edit our properties. And here we can now specify what we want the values of those properties to be. So for the list name, let's put in, oh, you can see it's throwing an error on us. That's because as we type a property, it is trying to change that web part for us automatically. So it's trying to make a call to a list with the name of P and there's no list called P. So it's going to throw these errors for us every time we enter a character. So we don't want the web part to apply these properties automatically. We want to force the user to click an apply button. So we need to make one more change to our project. What we need to do is we need to disable the reactive property changes. So we can just override the disable reactive property changes and have it return true. So basically to disable that and give us a validate button. So now that we've made that change, we can save it refresh the page and now when we edit the properties we want to do promoted links you can see we have an apply button here that we can apply and it's not throwing an error anymore so you want to do promoted links all promoted links for our view for my next arrow I want to use greater than for less than and I want to show arrows and let's apply that and there is our slider Right, and we're telling it to use the all promoted links view. Let's say I want to specify a different view. I have also have a view for marketing. And now I can apply that, and it's only showing me the two slides that I have tagged to use for marketing. So there you have it. We took an existing customization, we converted it to the SharePoint framework, we take advantage of some properties to make it more usable for the users. So hopefully you've seen some benefits from using the SharePoint framework. So I urge you to go out there, and there's a lot of good blog content already out there about the SharePoint framework. Check out the blog posts from some of the geniuses out there like Waldeck uh, and Wichter and Chris O'Brien and Andrew Connell. Um, look for a training session coming soon uh, from Andrew Connell as well. Uh, but yeah, get in there, get started, get your hands dirty. It's, it's a big change to the way uh, these us client-side devs have been working for a while, but I think in the long run, you'll see the benefits pay off, especially when you have to maintain these projects uh, long term. Thanks again for stopping by.